Hallelujah. As we continue to speak about the benefits of walking in the glory of God, or being God's glory carrier, we have realized that in verse 7, the river banks had many trees on each side, and all these trees were being supplied by the river. They were bearing fruit in every month. The leaves did not wither. These trees represent people who come around us when we, have, we carry God's glory. The glory of God draws people to us. Just as you see trees growing on the banks of the river, when you walk in deeper levels with the Holy Spirit, many people are going to come around you. And when they come around you, because you are nourishing them, they are going to bear fruit in the season and out of season. They are not going to wither. Instead, they are going to be refreshed. Revival is going to come into their lives. Their, their lives are going to start to benefit others. As the tree bears fruits and people enjoy the fruits, people are going to start enjoying the fruits that come out of your walk in the deep levels with the Holy Spirit. The people whom you nourish are going to start also healing others because the leaves heal the nations. Nations are going to be healed because you chose to walk in the deeper levels of the Holy Spirit. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says in verse 8 that the river goes up to the Dead Sea. To me, this means that when we walk into the deep levels of the Holy Spirit, we will walk with our river inside us to the dead world. And the dead world will experience revival. Praise the Lord. So the world is full of people who don't know God, who are like a dead, like the dead sea. I want to proclaim that you are going to go to the nation, which, the nations which are spiritually experiencing spiritual drought, and the nations will be revived because you have carried the glory of God upon your life. The river of his presence is within you flowing so that the nations will be refreshed. There is no one walking at the anointing of the ankle level, below, as shallow as the ankle level, who can take revival to the dead world. We need to be in the deeper level. The ankle level is like a brook that which Elijah was on in, in, in 1 Kings 17. The brook ran out of water because the drought delayed and it took like three years. Praise the Lord. The drought which is in the world needs a deeper level of walking with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. The other importance, which I don't want to miss today, the importance or the benefit of walking in the deeper level of the Holy Spirit is that when you walk in the deeper level of the Holy Spirit, when you walk in the deeper river of His presence, God makes you wonder. God makes you a supernatural being. Many people are just looking for power to see miracles and wonders. But God wants to make you yourself a wonder. Hallelujah. Have you heard me right? God wants to make us a wonder. God wants to make us spiritual, supernatural beings. Praise the Lord. You are not like other people. You yourself, you are a wonder. Praise the Lord. How can that be? Me to be a wonder? Yes. In Acts chapter 5, verse 15 to 16, Apostle Peter, who had even gone back fishing, when he, he came back and was reinstated, he started going into the deeper levels of walking with the Holy Spirit. He walked with the glory of God to the extent that in one time in one city, when they realized the glory that was upon him, the grace which was upon Peter, they brought the sick on their sick beds, the demon possessed, they laid them on the street. As he walked, when the shadow passed them, fell on them, they all got healed and demons left them. Is that not being a wonder? You even don't know what sicknesses they are suffering. 
But by just walking and your shadow falls on people who are sick and they get healed, that is the Lord's desire to make us a wonder. Praise the Lord. The problems that are in the world, you cannot lay hands on everybody and manage. You just need to be a wonder. You shall decree a word and people shall be healed. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, God wants to make you a wonder. Just as he made Apostle Peter a wonder. The people who walk in the deeper levels of his presence, when they are in that glorious presence and they decree a word, things take place. Just like Elijah in 1 Kings 17, he just decreed to the king of Israel that there will be no rain. And at his word, it did not rain for three and a half years. Never joke with people who walk with the glory of God, who carry God's glory. When they are not glory, they can decree anything, and the Lord affirms it. Praise the Lord. They are, God honors his glory. So when he bestows upon somebody his glory, the word he speaks has authority. We are going to come out of the deeper rivers with words of authority. Hallelujah. Kara loko shita. May the authority be in your tongue. May the authority be in your mouth. That you will speak to mountains. And people's problems will melt. Hallelujah. There's a, 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 there's a, a book of Psalms which I like so much. Psalms 114 from verse 1 to 8. Psalms 114, verse 1 to 8. We see Moses leading the children of Israel. When Moses was leading the children of Israel, when they started their journey from Egypt, as they walked, the Red Sea gave way. Hallelujah. At the presence of God, mountains were skipping like lambs, like rams, hills like lambs, mountains like rams, Mount the Red Sea and the Jordans, we are just giving way because this is a man who walked in the glory of God. Nothing could stand their way. I pray that also when you come out of that deeper level of walking with the Holy Spirit, when you walk, let every bottleneck melt at the presence of the glory of God. Let every mountain be leveled that you may continue. To manifest the glory of God. Praise the Lord. God defends the people upon whom he bestows his glory. When you walk into the deeper level with God and become God's friend, praise the Lord. He defends you. There are many times when people they want to justify how they are right. They get hurt when people are like accusing them. You don't need to. You have a, a living advocate living with you. As you carry God's glory, allow your advocate to do the work. Praise the Lord. In Numbers 12, from verse 1 up to 8, we remember Miriam and Aaron. One time, without Moses being in their meeting, they started accusing Moses for having married another woman from another foreign nation and they said did Moses only hear God we can't hear God and as they talked against the servant of God he did not know but God himself heard them and God summoned them for a meeting and asked them that you when there is a prophet among you I talk that prophet through visions and dreams but not so with my servant Moses God is like a saying that Moses is unique. He carries a special glory upon his life. He's not like these prophets of yours whom you can backbite. Hallelujah. For me, when I'm talking to Moses, I talk to him as a friend talks to a friend. Couldn't you respect my servant? And in that meeting, they left when Miriam had got his share of leprosy. Hallelujah. Moses did not even go to choose Miriam to God. God just saw that who is that one touching my glory. Hallelujah. When we see in Genesis 20, verse 1 to 7, 
Abraham's wife had been taken by Abimelech when Abraham feared that this Sarah is so beautiful they might kill me and take my wife so he said that Sarah is my sister and Abimelech said okay Muko, you can bring my inner brother bring me Sarah and Abraham willingly gave over Sarah but because Abraham was a friend of Jesus was a friend of God he, God did not allow Abimelech to sleep with Sarah. Praise the Lord. Is there somebody tampering with your partner? Instead of fighting in the flesh, you increase your love with God and the Lord will defend you. So God defended Abraham and he visited Abimelech in the dream and told him, you are a dead man. You have taken a prophet's wife. Hallelujah. So Sarah was saved from going with the, the king, Abimelech. God defends his people who carry his glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I told that when you carry God's glory, you become a wonder. All oh, these are wonders. There was a goddess general I read about called Catherine Coleman. Catherine was taken in a hotel. She prayed herself up, got tired, came out on the balcony to relax and to get fresh air. As she was looking down, the glory of the Lord was shining upon her. The people down were being delivered out of demons without her saying a word. Hallelujah. And when the host came for her from the hotel room, when they went through the corridors of the hotel, the chefs were being slain by the power. That is a wonder. May God make you a wonder in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want to conclude. Before your next mission, before your next engagement in any ministry, can you ask like what, what Moses asked in Exodus 33? 15 to 23, that God show me your glory. And God granted Moses. He took him to a cleft and showed him his glory. God wants us to show him, to show us his glory, that he may make us wonders everywhere we go. May the Lord make you a wonder in Jesus' mighty name. I release the glory upon you the power of being a wonder, the grace of being a wonder, I decree, let it be upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.